Karen Birchall, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Take time to hit the subscribe button. If you click on the bell, you can choose the option to be notified as soon as I upload new videos. That way you won't miss any. Today we have a video in the Build Your Stash series. In this series, I show you inexpensive and quick ways that you can take a little time and build your art journaling and mixed media stash. And then you have the supplies and materials at the ready when you want to create. If you wish to support my channel, you can shop through my Amazon influencer links or make a donation through my PayPal link. Both of these links can be found in the description box below. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today in Build Your Stash, we are going to make some homemade stamps and give you some shortcuts of how you can maximize some of the stamps that you have and create some more that will make some interesting marks, whether you're using them on a jelly plate or directly onto an art journal page or a canvas. So we're just going to get started. I have a few ideas of things to show you. So what we're going to use is fun foam. Now the what you see here is a fairly large sheet. It is 12 by 18 and it, it I bought from Michaels and it is quite a bit thicker. Now you can buy fun foam different places um, but watch the thickness. If you look this was one I think I got at the dollar store and it is quite a bit thinner and I for there are purposes the thicker stuff will work better there's even thinner than this I know I went to the dollar store to pick up some and it was even thinner than what I had and I just like ooh, that is way too thin because I don't think you're going to get enough of a stamp or an impression with it but if that's all you have access to give it a try you might have to layer one or two so it's fairly inexpensive to get it and you can also get some that are peel and stick and depending on the quality the the stick may be good enough to do what we're doing so we are going to make a swirl stamp and you've seen me use this swirl stamp and before and it kind of looks like this actually I peeled it off the one that I had there had gotten hard over time probably because I don't necessarily clean off the acrylic paint all the time. It's not going to last forever. So I need to replace this because I love this stamp and I'm also going to make some other even smaller ones. So what I'm going to do is just, you know, kind of make it so that the swirl is going to be about the same size as the block and I'm going to just start by making it round. Now it's organic. It doesn't have to be perfectly, perfectly round at all. So what I'm going to do is simply cut and I'm going to go in on a swirl and I'm leaving quite a bit there because we are going to, once we get to the middle, we're coming back and you'll see what I mean here because you need to remove Remove some of the um, because right now, if I put this on, it's just perfect. So we need to get to cut off some of it. So I'm just going to kind of go back, and I'm not sure why my camera cut off there, but we're just going back, and I'm kind of going down roughly center. I'm going to see if this can zoom in, if you can get a better look of this. And when you're done this, you're actually going to have two swirls, not one. So there we have the one and 
the two. Now I'm thinking, you know, that's a, it's a little too big, so I can cut this off wherever I see fit. So that's pretty much going to fit there. And you can taper it and move it. You can tidy up the edges, this make this very smooth if, if that matters to you. I don't think it matters, you know, this is more organic. You're not looking for a perfect, perfect, perfect stamp. So what I'm going to do is now I need to glue this down. And I can use my clear tacky gel or I have Gorilla Glue and I'm going to just go get my hands on that. Okay, I've had where the Gorilla Glue kind of ate through plastic. I put it on the end of this and it actually, do you see how it corroded it and it ate, kind of dissolved it. So I was just doing a little bit of a test here on some foam and it's fine. And this is Gorilla Glue, original Gorilla Glue. So I'm just going to put it on with a palette knife, just like this. I'm thinking the Aileen's would work just fine. You just want to have good contact. And I'm just going to put some on here. Okay. Now you don't want to put dents into this because if you do, if you put, if I poke, that will show up when you stamp. And you might, ma it might matter and it might not, but just so you're aware, you don't want to, to get it. any mark that you put on it is going to show up potentially. And so that is that. So I might want a tinier one. Now, what I have here, I have some wooden blocks. This was from a stamp, a large stamp, and I removed it because I you don't use it on, I don't use it on there. I use it just in my, free in my hand, and I put that, and that works better for me. So a lot of my stamps I've taken off, my script stamp, I've taken off the blocks, but I didn't throw out the blocks because these can be reused. They're very handy, and they work really well. So my husband just cut that into four. Also, you know, we had some of these two by, th two by, one by threes, one by fours, and I just had him cut them the different sizes just to use. If you don't have someone to cut that, you know, neighbor, friend, you can also buy like the little wooden blocks um, that you can buy at the dollar store. Or what you can do is just use cardboard or foam board and just layer it up. Now here's a stamp I made and I have a layer of foam board and a couple of cardboard that I've glued together. You want to be able to grab it though. So you need it to be high enough so that you can hold on to it without any real difficulty. But since I have this, this is what I'm going to, to use. And I think that's going to be a nice littler swirl than what I've had. I find more and more, as I do more and more art, I'm moving towards the homemade mark makers. I, I find they just add that really something special to your plan. To your your project and then you don't have to worry about copyright 
because you know what the angel policy of the various um, companies allows you to make products taking pictures of them selling prints of that is is not allowed and if that's something that you're going to get into then you have to pay attention to copyright so there we have you know two similar but very but different ones now I I might try to I've made one of these on a bigger sheet and it has multiple and that I use on my uh, gel print gel plate and here's that and this is just mounted on foam board and we just have multiple swirls so when on, on a gel plate but this is only one foam board thick I actually would like at least another one to be easy to to access so we have that next up what we have I used my cuddle bug and I cut out of foam using a die cut a die and I have a snowflake so I thought you know what that's going to be just perfect that one doesn't quite fit So that is to be about right. So if you have a cuddle bug or a Sizzix and you have dies, you can do this. I, I have three dies and <laughs> um, it's not something I have a lot of, but if you get together with friends, um, you can share and stamp out. So we have the snowflake, and then this this one that I just purchased. So I'm going to cut this into the width that I want. We'll just put that on there, and I'll come back. So I'm just using a metal ruler to help me. To cut and I have my cut mat cutting mat underneath and I think I'll just do Now this is out of the thinner, thinner board, thinner um, foam, so I guess we're going to see how well it does. At the end I will show all of these. Um, How they stamp. So here's another die cut that I my friend cut for me and I've put it on there. You can also buy fun foam shapes 
and put the here's an example of it on a block and I put you know on all four sides these are flowers but I did put I layered them up too and I might actually end up doing that with this one I do have another one cut and I think just to get a good stamp I think that's what I'm going to end up doing so there's the block you know and initially I had it here but you want something to be able to hold on to So I am actually going to do that right now. So if you got flower die cuts or whatever, they can become, you can turn them into stamps that give a different look to your piece. There we go. We're just going to layer that up. And normally, I mean, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time making a stamp for something like Chris for Christmas. Just usability. Am I going to utilize that? But I'm just showing you, you can use your dies and your Cuddlebug or Sizzix to, to punch out a fun foam. Now you can also just go and cut different shapes and put on here. So because I, I find using the layers kind of tedious, what I want to do is I'm just going to cut some circles and just have like bubbles because I like those I like my bubble stencils and I like the look of circles on there and so I would like to have some here so if you like a stencil you can kind of those are probably the ones that you want to um, use again and again so what I'm going to do I'm just looking for sizes here and I'm just kind of pressing into the foam and then I'm going to be able to cut the that out. So again, this isn't about you going and making exactly the same stamps as me. This is about you looking at your supplies and building your stash using what you have. I highly recommend the swirl stamp. I've used it so much, so I'm going to make actually lots of different sizes of the swirls. Partial swirls, bigger, smaller, because I really like how that looks. So you can do any shape, stars, hearts, circles. And once you make them and stamp with them, you're going to know if you like it the way it is. For instance, the the swirl like this that I showed you, the bigger one where I had multiples, I made that first because I thought, oh, that would be great. But I found that just having a single one allowed me more flexibility. Okay, I think I want one more of these of this size. And I'm not overly concerned if it's so perfect. Okay, now I want something that's going to be smaller. So 
So I'm looking at my lids. Oop, that's not going to work. So I'm going to do a search and we'll be back with a smaller. Okay, so I'm using the lid of a pen. Here I have another tinier swirl, and here I'm using, or reusing, these are stamp platforms from teacher stamps. So sometimes you can pick those up at garage sales or um, at the dollar store. I just peeled off the, you know, 100% spelling or, you know, okay or whatever, and I'm just going to put, I'll put that on there. Here's another one. I like the Harlequin stencils that I have so I'm just going to cut these diamond shapes now I'm not going to measure I'm not a f you know I, I spent so much of my time cutting and when I taught younger grades and making things that I find I just don't want to do it anymore so I'm just using this and I'm sorry if I'm getting off camera as kind of a guideline Oh, there we go. I might just squeeze these in. I will do the final gluing off camera because I don't need, you don't need to watch me doing that. Now, one of the things that I want to point show you is I have bought this. It was in the Michaels bin and it was a couple years ago and I haven't found it again. But what I did, it was a string of snowflakes and there was a string of holly. What I did is I cut them apart and I mounted each one on a separate one of these blocks. And you can see them. And this is perfect because when I'm teaching classes, I now have four snowflake stamps, not one. I have four holly stamps, not one. So that's one way to um, make it count. And then I took it off this block, so I'm going to reuse this for something else. So here is another die cut, and I just put four of them together. So we have that one I showed you. There's another one. I'm just showing you examples, so maybe it'll trigger something in you that says, oh yeah, a puzzle piece looks quite nice. I've used that one. And just an interesting pattern. Okay, so now, I like my primitive heart shape. And I'm not sure. Oh, well, that's too wide for that, too narrow for this. The other thing you can do is this is the top of a um, soda stream, the flavored stuff. You can put the stamps, you can glue these on to here. This makes a nice handy holder. Takes up a little bit more room in your stash, but it is doable. Other lids, this this lid would be perfect. And it becomes a stamp. Pill bottles. The lids of pill bottles also work really well for smaller stamps. Now the thing about this is you only need a few of actual pill bottles because you keep 
all of these separately and you only need a couple of these to screw on when you want so then you don't have the bulk for storage. So I'm going to actually put, I have some of these single lights. So I'm going to put one on there so if I draw a line I can put the lights wherever I want them. glob of this here because that's going to interfere. There we go. Maybe I'm going to put this small swirl on here. And I just keep these blocks and everything, my, my lids, this is my stamp building thing. So when I'm doing a build your stash, as I am right now, I can just pull it out and it's all there. So there's a tinier swirl. I wasn't kidding, I love, I love my swirls. So you wanna look around for interesting shapes. And I like this one. This was a, a punch from my friend Yvonne and I had made a stencil out of it so now I am simply going to continue and now make a stamp out of it. So look for interesting shapes neutral, you know, if you're spending the time to make stamps, like I said, I don't know that you would want to do a whole lot of something very specific for one season, unless you're doing a lot of cards and card making and stuff like that, that's fine. But you want something a little more um, general that you can use on a multitude of theme, th you know, pages. We're always looking to maximize the use of our the supplies that we have in our stashes, whether we purchase them or um, make them ourselves. I mean, I'm very fortunate. I have a studio to to work in. It's not the largest studio, and there's a definite shortage of. Um, storage but you know I don't want I want to be able to have the stuff I want in here oh I think this is going to make a beautiful stamp now if you don't have a punch like this just go online and look for star clip art or swirl clip art and see what you can find I don't think I need a bigger one than that, so that is just going to get glued onto there. I'm, I'm anxious to use this one. I think that's going to look really sweet. And there's this one, this kind of ami amoeba kind of shape. So this was from a silhouette cut file and I like that shape. So I think I'm going to make one of these and I think I might take the shape of it and just make kind of a leaf stamp in by itself. I 
I've got some stars here. And this was just a star that I took off clip art. Okay, so I've let this, the glue, dry all night, and it's pretty much what it took. So everything's pretty much adhered on there. So now what I want to do is show you what they look like. Um, you know, and then you're going to have to stay tuned to my channel to see me using these. I'm going to put these in a bucket right on my desk, and then I'll be able to grab them and... Um, And just use them on my art journal pages to make those backgrounds that I love 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 making so you can use both ink or paint with these so I'm just going to show you with the ink and this is just a large this is jumbo archival ink black but any ink will work and all I'm going to do is just get ink it up, you know, have a nice wet ink pad. Okay, so that was a die cut of a snowflake on the foam. So I think that's going to look quite nice. We'll do some of these with, with uh, ink and then we're going to switch and we'll do it with acrylic paint just to show you both. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting shape. You know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, when you're creating backgrounds, you're adding all these layers. These are not intended necessarily to be focal point stamps. Okay, so this was just a heart, my primitive heart that I've, you've seen me cut. I love this shape. As you can see, it's making very nice stamps. Then I have the feather. And this one, I, you know, you can play, put some one on each side especially if they're distinctly different. Hmm, that might be interesting. I'm 
my absolute must-have swirl. Okay, so now I'm just going to switch to acrylic paint. And I'm gonna just I'm gonna try using some uh, just use some of the Americana just craft paint because I know a lot of people that's what you have and I want to show you that this will work. So I'm just gonna spread this out on my craft mat. I'm just gonna spread it with my palette knife. And I'm just looking to see that it is covered. I think this one will be quite nice. And remember when you're stamping, you can be stamping half off the page. And if you I think I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful about removing the acrylic paint just so they last a little bit longer, but here's just a little flower one. I had I used um I don't think I did this on camera, I used clip art. One thing that you can do when you're stamping with acrylic paint is even get a combination of colors and then you get kind of a two-tone. So that's one. And remember, with this I could, to make it easier, just put it on the bottle and it actually becomes quite, you don't, you know, with the, with the um, paint, you don't want it too thick. Kind of liking that. So I stamp in and then I often stamp off. I'm just going to add. <laughs> there we go. Well, I got three different colors on here now. I might just make this one now, seeing how it stamps, I might just make some just with the two curly cues like this. What else you can do if I have something like this, what I might want to do is just if I want different colors, bulbs, you could just paint onto your stamp.
didn't shake it up enough. So I have that green. Well, that's rather cute and then you can outline it with um, it's just a pan or micron one other thing you can do is just use okay, pit brush markers here So I'm just going to, I don't have, I've never, I've not done this, but I know people do, they do it on regular stamps. So I'm just going to try. This. And there you have it. Okay. Just giving you some alternatives of things you can use. This kind of stuff, coloring it in like that, probably not something I'm going to do a lot of. That's, for me, it uh, falls under that finicky category. You can also use your gel plate, if you have a gel plate, as, as the stamp pad. And I just want to use some regular acrylics. Oh, let's use. Diox purple. Again, I could just spread this on the palette mat. And to be honest, most of the time I would be just doing it on the on the palette mat. Just point blank. But I just, like I said, I want to show you alternatives. So liking that. I can see that adding to some of my backgrounds. The nice part of this is it gives it a nice thin layer and you're probably not going to get more too much paint on it. But you play around and see which look you like. This is kind of lighter, but I can see, you know, this is a little too boxed for me. I probably would put a little bit more random, not so perfect. That's going to add nice shape to, you know, and remember when you're stamping on a page, you're going to stamp some of it off the page. So you're going to end up 
but just have some of this repeating. That one's going to be a good addition. And I'll put pictures of all of these at the end. I did the one single flower, but I did a cluster as well. Oh, I can see myself using that. I like that. And then, I'm not going to get into the whole jelly printing at this time. But if I just stamp on my gel plate like that, I can use it to create, come on, come on, a gel print. So you can use these foam stamps see what we get here. To put marks and put add layers and interest on your gel prints. So it's just another way of being able to use, utilize it. So you can stamp direct onto your project. You can stamp onto papers, colored papers that you will then use on your project or you can make gel prints right on it. Because if you're going through the trouble of making something, spending time, money, making something, you want it to be something that you are going to use. And if you can use it in more than one way, even better. So I have my really liking these little guys. Oh, this is going to be a popular one. And it's really easy with the pill bottle. To hold it. So I think, you know, for little ones like this, different ones, I think I might make a lot more square shape, diamonds, hearts, um, different swirls than what you see here. And sometimes you get bigger pill bottles, maybe wider. Look out for even caps that you have a wider surface because it's so handy. It makes it really, really easy to do. Oh, one other thing we have here. I'm going to grab that pill bottle again. I'm going to have to put this on the back of this one. This one is just the tiny bulb. I could put these bulbs if I had a big a Christmas tree. Or this could be, I could turn this into petals of a flower. And if I had a circle, I could put, so it could be leaves. I 
So very simple, but lovely.